So, uh, you know, I'm the founder of Sharan, and Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. Why reconnection to animals and nature in the middle of diabetes reversal? Because animals and nature know how to be well. And if we follow what they are doing, we can be well too. So that's the cue. Like, for example, if someone has diabetes, they go to the doctor and the doctors give them medicine. And we already know that nobody gets better that way, right? That's why we're all here. So, but in nature, animals rarely get diseases in the wild. And if they do, they know how to heal them. We are no less intelligent than them, right? Okay, so as uh, Abhinav said, Sh uh, Sharon's vision was a diabetes-free India, and now we have extended it much further because uh, if anyone knows this, why would they want to be sick, right? So reversing diabetes, uh, this is my book, just in case you want to learn more, and it's available on Kindle as well, and it's not very expensive, so this is for you to have as a Bible, to learn more, read a bit, and even have the recipes in there. We also have other uh, things to support you, but this is something that if you're interested in knowing more, you could go for this. Now, the current approach when someone gets diabetes, and whether it's in the UK or US or no matter what, where, is that they go to the doctor and the doctor tells you not to have would anyone like to turn on their mic and tell me what does the doctor say? Cut the carbohydrate. Cut the carbohydrates, cut the sugars. Yeah. And we all do this to a large extent. Does anyone get well? Not really, Not. right? Yeah. Yes. So, and then they give us medicines. <clears throat> and the medicines over a period of time spiral upwards. <laughs> So the sad part is that medicines in general never cure, but the body always works to heal. Now, this is a video of someone who came for our 21-day health retreat. And in our 21-day health retreat, we do all the blood tests at the beginning. As people get better, we cut down medication, and then we do all the blood tests at the end. But this man didn't wait till the end. He was already so much better in the, uh, you know, in the second week of the program. So I'm just going to share this video with you. One week of medicines. Okay. This man is Mr. Manohar Shetty. He's the owner of Sai Vishram Hotel. And the reason I'm telling you this is if anyone visits Bangalore, you can actually visit his restaurant, uh, which is called Prakriti Ahara, uh, or food made by nature. And all the food is similar to what we're used to having. So don't worry, you will not be deprived of anything, but it will be just made in a different way. And I'll tell you more about that soon. So medicines have side effects and medicines anyway never cure. But why is it what medicines do is they control. But why is it so important to get rid of diabetes? Right? That's what we're going to discuss. Now, before we get there, a few questions. Can diabetes really be reversed? And you guys are going to be the living proof of that. What if I'm on insulin? So if you're on insulin, maybe you will not be able to stop the insulin within these, this period of time that we have together, but you should be able to reduce the insulin by at least half. Many people are on only one third by that time. Okay, so you will be well on your way to getting better. What about type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, or even um, 
autoimmune thyroiditis or ankylosing spondylitis or there's so many of those sorry i have to literally go on and on we can go but um type one uh, autoimmune diseases require a long time to get well so if someone is on type 1 diabetes if someone has type 1 diabetes they will be able to reduce the insulin dramatically but they will not get well in this period but they will get well eventually largely not 100% but largely how long does it take and this all depends on several factors it depends on how many medicines you are on how long you have had it uh, what is your age what is your state of mind how much are you willing to do etc i'm going to ask the doctors who are with me to add to this later or at any time during the presentation if they wish to and what should i do to reverse diabetes that's what we're going to talk about today but why should we reverse diabetes that's what we're going to talk about right now and the main reason that we want to reverse diabetes is because it has so many complications diabetes can affect every part of the body you can get eye symptoms like retinopathy or you can get heart disease and you can even get a heart attack without knowing about it you can get i mean it increases the chances of stroke and heart attack by four times both diabetes and hypertension together cause kidney failure and nowadays we see so many people having kidney failure and going in for dialysis well this can be prevented if we take action now and then neuropathy so many of us have neuropathy already maybe and we are taking vitamin b12 or sometimes even other medicines for the neuropathy and one of the most important things in men is impotency and impotency can come even in the early stages of diabetes in fact it can be a precursor of diabetes and hypertension diabetes and hypertension often go hand in hand and so if you have not just one but two of these diseases your doctor will help you with all of them and of course if one is pregnant and has diabetes it's dangerous not just for the mother but also for the child because the child will be overweight it may go into a cesarean section etc and gangrene and amputation right if we don't get enough oxygen to a part of the body then that part doesn't survive anymore and it may go black and you may find yourself with gangrene and gangrene will cause more problems so it has to be amputated now considering all these complications i'm sure that there's nobody here who doesn't want to reverse diabetes is there anyone like that you can write in the chat box or you can even turn on your mic and speak is there anyone who is not committed to getting rid of diabetes okay that's good right now reversing lifestyle diseases like diabetes and hypertension and some of you may have hypothyroidism or other things together your doctor will help you with all of those requires lifestyle changes right it's a lifestyle disease because of a reason our lifestyle and so we need to make lifestyle changes now it's often difficult to make lifestyle changes but it's not so difficult for example you may be coming home every day and having dinner at the same place on the table we get into habit we are creatures of habit but one day if you have to change your place on the table it's possible so any change is difficult changing your country changing your city changing your job changing your school changing your partner whatever you have to change is difficult but after some time we get used to it changing your toothpaste or changing your brand of tea can also like when you start a new toothpaste you may not like it so much right but after a while after a very short while you get used to it now if we want to reverse any disease 
we already know that we cannot reverse it with medicine, right? What do we have to do to reverse any disease? Would anyone like to venture a guess with your mic on? Changing food habits. Yes, that you already know that we're here for that. But what do we really need to do to reverse any disease? Exercise, workouts. Okay, let me make it even simpler. If you have any problem in the world, <clears throat> what will you do to solve that problem? I think you root, need to be have root, determination. Uh, root cause, <laughs> find the root cause of it. Right, you have to find the root cause of the problem and remove it. So medicine treats symptoms. Uh, if you take medicines for uh, a diabetes, then it brings down the blood sugar, but it doesn't solve the problem. But if we want to get rid of diabetes, we have to remove the cause of diabetes. And that's what we're going to look at today. So what are the real causes of diabetes? And the number one cause is fat, not sugar. You know, high blood sugar is the result of diabetes. The cause of diabetes is insulin resistance or lack of insulin. So if we want to get rid of diabetes, we have to understand what is the cause of insulin resistance. And insulin resistance, like if you see this cell, you can see that there's inside the cell intramyocellular lipid. That's just a fancy name for fat. Now this fat blocks the insulin receptors and doesn't allow insulin to work. When insulin doesn't work, insulin resistance occurs and the glucose cannot enter the cell. And when the glucose collects in the bloodstream, this is diabetes. So the main cause is fat. Now, where is the fat coming from? It could be the fat on your body or it could be the fat in the food. All oil, ghee, butter is going to be eliminated. And you may have received the basic cooking class already. And that guides you exactly on how to reverse, how to change your cooking so that you can eat the same kind of food that you're used to, but you're cooking it without any oil. Now, it's not just the oil, ghee and butter, which is full of fat. It's all the packaged foods because fat is so addictive. It's all the animal products like meat, fish, chicken, egg, boil, any of them, you get fat on top. But milk too, if you boil milk, you get fat on top. So all animal products are full of fat. And honestly, plant products are not devoid of fat, but they have much less and they have something which helps take the fat out of the body. Does anyone know what that is? Fiber. Okay, very good. Who said that? Oh, Chandni. <laughs> okay. okay. I, it's a little bit of a cheat because I've read your book. <laughs> Correct. Okay, so the main cause of diabetes is fat. But, <coughs> excuse me, the fiber holds onto the fat and prevents it from going into the bloodstream. It holds onto the fat and takes it out of the body. So the fiber is something very good. So not only do we have to stop all the fat, but we have to increase all the fiber. And only plants produce fiber. There's no fiber in animals or any animal product. And therefore, our diet should be completely plant-based. Now, diabetes is a hormonal problem and all our hormones are orchestrated by the pituitary gland, which is a gland at the back of our brain. And if one hormone goes out of balance, others may too, which is why people have diabetes and hypothyroidism and PCOD and uh, infertility and other problems together, hormonal problems come in together. Sorry about that. Just give me a second. Okay, 
And then chemicals, you must be knowing that chemicals are hormone disruptors. And so we are going to minimize the chemicals in our lives. Actually, we are living in a world full of chemicals. And nowadays, the biggest chemical is the hand sanitizer, right? And then stress. Many of you know that when you're stressed, your blood sugars go up, but also that diabetes could have been caused by stress. You get a very severe stress, your blood sugar shoots up, the stress is gone, but your diabetes is not gone. This happens. And of course, someone mentioned lack of exercise. So lack of exercise will help you accumulate that fat and lack of rest rest and exercise are equally important our body heals only during rest so if we don't get those seven or eight hours of rest every day a good sound sleep then we are likely to get we are likely to have higher blood sugar levels and then lack of vitamin d vitamin d is also a hormone which is why we always ask you to get certain tests done and vitamin D is one of them. And did you know that tea, coffee, colas, alcohol and smoking all raise not just blood sugar but also blood pressure and therefore we want to minimize them, actually stop them. Okay, but I don't want you to think that this is very hard. Your doctors are going to help you get rid of this without suffering from too many problems. Now, what are not the causes of diabetes that people believe are? Number one, fruit. In fact, in our 21-day retreat, we often have it in June and it's a season of mangoes and people come from all over and enjoy our delicious mangoes and they can have as many mangoes in a day as they wish because when they're having mangoes, something else is going out and fruits are always the healthiest because remember sugar is not the cause of diabetes high blood sugar is the result of diabetes but the cause of diabetes is fat and lack of fiber and fruits are not filled with fat but they are filled with fiber right that does not mean fruit juice because the fiber is taken out also, these are all good news is for you. You can have as much whole carbohydrates as you want. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, brown rice, rice cake, etc. You can have all of them. And, you know, often your doctor says if you have diabetes, you should eat every two hours. And this is not at all true. We have to go back to animals or even infants. Like when an infant is full, their lips are sealed and nobody can open them. Have you seen this? It's the same with animals. If anyone has a pet and you put the pet's favorite food in front of them, at a point, the pet will stop eating because they're full, right? But we have been taught by our culture or our parents finish your food, don't leave anything in your plate, etc. It's time to eat, you must eat now. So many things that our parents tell us. So we are used to stuffing ourselves and not waiting till we're hungry. So that's a change we need to make and we don't need to eat all the time. And when you eat only when you're hungry, you'll see your blood, your medicines go down because your blood sugar goes down. So now the good news is you can eat as much fruit as you want. So is that good news for anyone here? Tell me with your mic on. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. So we are going to have a lot of fun, right? And uh, milk. Like we've been brought up thinking milk is the best food for us. But if we think about it in nature, Every mammal produces milk only for their young, right? And no animal drinks another animal's milk. Pigs don't drink goat's milk and monkeys don't drink elephant's milk. But milk contains the following factors that actually cause diabetes. Cause. 
Number one, fat. Milk is full of fat. And even that skim milk or 2% milk has fat in it. More fat than your orange or your fruit. Hormone. Milk is a natural secretion of a female mammal and it contains all kinds of hormones which upset our own hormonal balance and lend to diabetes. Pesticides, right? Because all those cows aren't eating organic food and sometimes we're very careful to buy organic milk but then we are having biscuits and ice cream and nobody looks at whether that's organic or not or cake, right? So when a cow has to eat 12 kilos of grain to produce one liter of milk, those pesticides are concentrated in the milk. And in India, at least, the ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research, has done studies on milk, 50,000 samples from all over India, and they found that milk contains 570 times the permissible levels of milk. 570 times the permissible levels of milk. Now, look, nobody checks the pesticide levels in milk most of the time. And so we don't know how much your milk has. But I can tell you one thing, India is exporting milk all over the world. So we don't know when we have, you know, milk globally, how much pesticide it actually has. But one thing we know that milk or all animal products contain more pesticides than any plants or, uh, you know, any fruits or vegetables. And that's just because they are concentrated because they're higher on the food chain. Am I making sense to you guys? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. And lack of fiber. Milk has no fiber. And remember, the fiber is going to help us remove the fat. And on top of it, one of the most important things is that milk contains stress hormones. When we are stressed, we produce adrenaline. When animals are stressed, they produce adrenaline. If you take, if you make a cow pregnant so that she'll produce milk, and then you tie her up and tie up her legs and start taking all the milk so that her baby cannot feed, she's very stressed. And she produces a lot of adrenaline, which comes in the milk. Now, if you all actually follow these guidelines for three months, you will see what a huge difference it makes in your state of mind. And that's what I want you to really experience. And then milk contains something called IGF, insulin-like growth factor, which looks like insulin and it takes the place of insulin on the receptors. That means insulin is like a key that opens the receptor and allows the glucose into the cell where it's needed to give energy. But if instead, you know, have you ever put the wrong key in a lock? Then it doesn't open the lock. It doesn't come out. It blocks the, um, the keyhole. And that's exactly what IGF does. It blocks up all those insulin receptors. And so you will see that if you stop dairy completely, blood sugars go down. Isn't that interesting? Because nobody tells you that. But if you do it, you will see it right away. Now, what is the logic behind this diet change? If you had a cow, you would feed it grass. Why do you feed it grass? Because we know that instinctively cows choose grass. And just in the same way, lions choose meat, right? But when it comes to us, we think we're omnivores. We can eat anything. If you go to Africa, someone eats lions as well. So what is the correct food for our species? If you go to a farm or an orchard and you see fruits and vegetables, Tell me with your mic on, what do you feel like doing? Well, I definitely want to try them out. You feel like picking them, right? Yes. yes but if you see a chicken walk by, maybe at the same farm, or if you see a goat, or if you see a cow, 
Does your mouth water? No. Right. So you can see that instinctively we don't eat chicken. In fact, like true omnivores, we can't pounce on the chicken, tear it apart and eat it whole. We truly can't eat these animals, right? But we have learned to eat them by cooking. And that's not natural. In nature, animals eat what they are instinctively attracted to, but we don't. Now, who's, who would salivate if they saw the chicken? Tell me with your mic on. Okay, let me help you out here. Maybe a fox or a dog, right? Why? Because a fox or a dog can pounce on the chicken, tear it apart, and eat it whole. A fox or a dog can eat skin, bones, beak, claws, everything. In fact, if you go to Africa and you see if a lion has a kill, the lion or other animals will eat it all and maybe only the cranium will be left, the skull. Besides that, every part of the body can be eaten. So we don't go to Africa and see skele whole skeletons of animals and the skin left there behind because animals eat their prey whole, right? So a dog would salivate, but we do salivate maybe, I don't know if you're vegetarian or non-vegetarian, but if you're non-vegetarian, you may salivate if you see a dish like this. And this is only because of conditioning. We've been conditioned to have it. Now, in the same token, we have to understand that if you see green fields of wheat and rice growing in the village, does your mouth water? Tell me with your mic on. No. No. No, right? No. So we have learned to eat wheat and rice, and wheat and rice is front and center in our diet. But truly, this is cow food, right? So we are eating now cow food, dog food, lion food, because goats and cows might be lion food. And we are also drinking milk, which is baby calf food. And so what we are doing is actually like putting diesel in a car that runs on petrol. No wonder we are sick. So the best foods for our species are all these fruits and vegetables, foods that you could eat even raw. I'm not saying that we need to be completely raw to reverse diabetes, but raw, we all know, is the very best because it has the highest number of nutrients and nutrients are the spare parts for healing. So we must have raw every day. Are you all hearing me well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Great, great. Okay, now, if you look at the teeth of a carnivore, and you look at the teeth of herbivores, and you look at the teeth of true omnivores, and now if you look at our own teeth, it's already clear. We're not the omnivores that we thought we were. And we all know that every baby loves their mother's milk. They don't want to leave their mother's milk. But when you first give them cow's milk, they don't appreciate. So milk is a food that every mammal produces only for its young. And we aren't calves and therefore we don't appreciate cow's milk. But milk is very addictive. So milk contains something called casomorphin, which addicts the baby to the mother. Baby doesn't want to leave the mother. But when we consume it, and especially if we consume it in concentrated forms like cheese or paneer or ice cream and so on, we know that it's very, very addictive, right? So many people don't want to leave cheese. And we are being manipulated all the time by advertisements. Advertisements tell us what to eat. And so I have a very easy formula for you. Look at everything that's advertised, make a list and don't eat that because nobody is going to 
spend money advertising things that are already in our instinct. And that's why you don't have advertisements for carrots and cucumber every day. You might have a sale, but you don't have advertisements for fruits and vegetables day by day, right? But when people make products, they make sure that everything addictive is put, everything addictive is put into the product. What is addictive? Sugar, salt, oil or fat, and uh, MSG sometimes, and of course, milk. You can buy potato chips. And if you're in the UK, it's called crisp. You can buy crisp with milk powder in them, flavored crisp. Why do they put milk powder? So that it will be more addictive. So what is our plan? All our food should be plant-based. Second, all our food should be whole so that it contains a fiber so that it can help take out that fat. And even if you're thin, you still have fat inside the muscle cell because you've been eating fat all this time. And we are going to eat organic because we are the only species that sprays up with poison. So animals eat it and then we eat it. Isn't that crazy? So we're going to look for organic food. Now I know I'm running out of time and so I'm going to finish real quickly. But even if I take a little longer, your questions will become less, so it's worth it. Okay, so our body always heals. And we have a five point plan that everything should be plant based, whole, organic, and vitamin B12 and D should be looked after. Now, what will you get during the consultation? You will get a basic cooking class, which will teach you how to cook anything you want, dairy free and oil free. You will get guidance. And supplements that you like, and you will get day by day guidance of a nutritionist and you will get guidance not just on food but also on reversing disease requires a shift in consciousness because today we live in a culture of disease and we have to shift to a culture of health and that's what your doctors are going to help you do